In the Topkapi Museum in Istanbul, Turkey, there is a rare copy of Al Jazari's manuscript. It was written in 1206 AD and contains within it blueprints of many of the components that are crucial to modern engineering. Al-Jazari, as his name says, comes from northern Iraq in the late 12th and the early 13th century. He was a very gifted engineer. Al-Jazari's world incorporated some of the hottest lands on earth, and he would have been acutely aware of how essential water was to sustaining its people and its culture. He created a series of machines, each of which would help society not only survive, but thrive in the sometimes dangerously arid climate. Al Jazari made huge advances in the development of mechanical technology in order to design his water raising devices. What is fantastic is that many of his machines match the principles of today's devices exactly. He tried to take age old standard technology for lifting water, for irrigation, and tried to improve them. Devices for raising water, like the Shaduf, generally relied on animal or manpower to drive them. Al Jazari removed the necessity for human, ox, or horsepower by designing a set of fully automatic lifting machines that use the power of the water itself to drive the mechanisms. One of the most intriguing has become known as water raising device number three. Until recently, it was thought that this complicated machine was an unrealized idea of Al Jazari's that existed only as a concept. But in Damascus in Syria, a water wheel on the river Yazid seems to be actually based on Al Jazari's design number three. It offers us a fascinating glimpse of his genius. Al Jazari was really a gifted practitioner. He was not only writing in his tradition, but he was really building them. From its inauguration in the 13th century, this water wheel served the local community for over 700 years. Incredibly, it was still transporting water to a nearby hospital until the 1970s. Al Jazari was a man who would often revisit and improve his designs. This astonishingly complete example is based on his third design for a water raising device and uses the intricate system of gears that is common throughout his work. In his book, Al Jazari mentions that this water lifting device is designed to work by means of scoopers. That is, water falls down on the scoopers from a certain height, causing them to rotate. This, in turn, drives the pinions and axles which move the water lifting buckets. This device has the same engineering principles, but rather than water falling, it works by horizontal water power in the Yazid River. The water wheel was moved by horizontal boards, which caused rotation that drove gears, pinions and axles to lift the water upwards. It was raised over 10 meters to the top of the tower. Up here, there are three wooden parts which have survived intact. A horizontal cogwheel was linked to a vertical cogwheel, which transfers the movement to a pulley where a set of chains and buckets is installed. The buckets carried water from the river to the top of the tower, from where it was discharged into an aqueduct to flow gently downward to the hospital. The wonderfully well-preserved device is a fine example of the use of technology to improve the quality of life for the people. But it was Al Jazari's design for his fourth water raising machine that would take the technology a vital step further and change mechanical engineering forever. It used a crank system. This is the earliest known use of this technology in a working machine. The crank is considered by today's engineers to be the most important single mechanical device after the wheel. What makes this invention so extraordinary is that 500 years later, it would play a significant part in ushering in the modern era. The use of uh, the crank and, and connecting it to uh, what we call a camshaft, uh, this had revolutionized machinery uh, and, and engines like the steam engine. Into a reciprocating one. Hand-operated cranks had been understood for centuries 
but the incorporation of a crank connecting rod system in a rotating machine represented a huge advance. Contemporary engineers who have studied Algezari's design have observed that the horizontal axle of the machine is turned by gears and that the end of the crank slides in the hinged connecting rod, causing it to oscillate around its hinge, thus making the water bucket rise and fall. Until scholars deciphered Algezari's design, it was believed that this system was the invention of 15th century Europeans. But in fact, Al-Jazari was using this crank device in his machine two centuries earlier. There are several other large water moving devices in existence, which show how widespread sophisticated technology had become throughout the region. One of the most efficient types of a fully automated water wheel is called a noria. Many survive to this day. The best preserved examples are located on the river Orontes near Hama in Syria. Described by the Roman engineer Vitruvius, writing in the first century BC, the Noria is a superbly simple water lifting machine. The beauty of the Noria is that it runs unattended, it's automatic, it uses natural forces to do the work for you. These powerhouses have been calculated to raise up to 95 litres of water per minute. They offer us a fascinating insight into much earlier norias found all across the east. It's a water-driven wheel with compartments or a buckets on the rim and paddles on the outside of the rim. The wheel is driven by water flowing underneath and as the wheel goes round, compartments dip underneath the water, water enters through a hole in the leading edge the compartment's carried up to the top of the wheel and the water discharges into a trough or launder near the top of the wheel. The diameter of the largest wheel was about 20 metres and there were 120 water collection compartments in the rim. The brilliant designs of Al Jazari and the beautiful surviving examples